Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're gonna do something really cool. We're gonna build your very first Android app right from scratch. We'll break the whole thing down into three simple parts. The face that the user sees, the brain that does the thinking, and the memory that stores all the important info. Let's get right into it. You ever had that thought pop into your head? You know, I could probably build an app. Well, today, we're not just gonna think about it, we're gonna prove you can actually do it. We're starting with a really simple idea, but it's powerful, and I'm gonna walk you through every single step to bring it to life. So, what's this grand app of ours gonna do? It's actually super simple. A user will type in their name, tap one button to save it, and then they'll see a little confirmation message pop up. That's it. And trust me, this simple little flow is the perfect way to really understand how all the pieces of an app work together. Okay, so just like building a house, you can't start putting up walls without a solid foundation. So before we write a single line of app code, we have to get our workspace set up in Android Studio. Think of this as us drawing up the blueprints before the construction begins. Getting started is actually a breeze. It's just a quick four-step process. First, we'll fire up Android Studio. Then we'll tell it we want a brand new project. We're gonna choose the empty activity template that just gives us a totally clean slate. And finally, we'll just pick a spot on our computer to save everything, simple. Now these settings are what give our app its unique identity. The app name, well, that's what people will actually see on their phone. The package name is kind of like a unique web address for our app, so the Android world can tell it apart from all the others. We're gonna use Java for our language and we'll set the minimum Android version to 7.0. That just means our app will work on a huge range of phones out there. All right, with our foundation all set, it is time for the fun part, designing what the user is actually going to see and tap on. We're about to build the face of our app. In the tech world, we call this the user interface, or just UI for short. So the UI is literally everything the user can see and touch. Buttons, text boxes, images, you name it. In Android, we lay all this stuff out in a special file called an XML file. For us, that file is activity underscore main.xml. You can really think of this file as the detailed blueprint for how our app is gonna look. Okay, let's look at our first little piece of UI code. This tag here, edit text, is basically us telling Android, hey, I need a box where the user can type some text. And see that Android ID part? That's us giving it a unique name, ID participant name, so we can easily find it and talk to it later on from our other code. So after all that, what does this little bit of code actually create for the person using the app? It's really that simple. That one line of code creates an empty text field right on the screen, just waiting for the user to start typing their name into it. This is the very first piece of our app's face. Next up, we obviously need a button. So the button tag creates one. Just like before, we give it a unique ID, ID participant BTN, and then the android.text attribute, well, that just sets the words that appear on the button itself. In this case, save. And that's really how you build a user interface, one piece at a time. We now have a place for the user to type something in and a button for them to take an action. With just these two things, the face of our app is pretty much done. So an app that can't remember anything isn't all that useful, right? Our next big step is to give our app a memory. We're gonna use a database to store information so that it's not just gone forever when the app closes. This gives us a really organized way to save data, which is way, way more powerful than just writing to some random text file. Now, to manage this new memory of ours, we're gonna create something called a database handler. You can think of this thing as the app's personal librarian. It knows exactly where to store data and how to find it again later. All the instructions for this librarian will live in a file called dbhandler.java. So how do we actually set up this memory? We use a command that looks a lot like this. Create table is an SQL command that basically tells the database, which is called SQLite on Android, to create a new storage container. The easiest way to think about it is like creating a new spreadsheet. Our table or our spreadsheet will be called participant list, and it's gonna have columns for things like an ID and a name. To save a name, we create this nice reusable block of code called a method. It follows a very clear recipe every single time. First, it opens up the database so we can write to it. Then it packages up the new name. It inserts that name right into our table. And then, this is important, it closes the database to keep everything tidy and efficient. Okay, let's recap. We have a face for the user to interact with and we have a memory to store things. Now we need the most important part, the brain that connects the two. The brain is what's going to contain all the logic that listens for the user to do something and then tells the memory what to do about it. 
In the world of Android, the brain of our app is called the main activity. It's the command center. It's where all the decision-making happens. The code that makes all this happen lives in a file called mainactivity.java, and it's what's going to make our app feel alive and responsive. This right here highlights a super important distinction. The brain, our main activity, is the boss. It decides when to do something, like right after the user clicks that save button. The memory, our DB handler, it just follows orders. It only knows how to store data when it's told to. Keeping these jobs separate is a really fundamental idea in programming. This one single line of code. This is the magic moment. This is where it all comes together. Right here, the brain is telling the memory, hey, run your add new participant method, and here's the name you need to save. This is that critical handshake, the connection that makes our app actually work. And that's it. The face, the memory, and the brain are all built. And more importantly, they're all connected. Now it's time for the payoff. Let's run the app and see our creation in action. So this is the whole journey from the user's perspective. They open the app, they see our UI, they type in their name, they tap save. That tap tells the brain to kick into gear, the brain tells the memory to save the name, and then the brain comes back and shows a confirmation message. It's a simple, perfect, logical flow. So if you take away one thing from all this, it's this simple three-part idea. You have a face for interaction, a brain for the logic, and a memory for storage. Once you understand how these three parts talk to each other, you have the foundation for building almost any app you can think of. We started with just an idea, and now we have a fully functional app that can actually remember information. That is a massive first step. So the only real question left is, now that you have this foundation, what are you gonna build next?